welcome to uh, the second edition of the E4M Tech Munch virtual series. The uh, topic for today is very relevant uh, uh, and something which everyone is talking about. Uh, we'll be discussing is digital marketing the best bet for marketeers? As we have seen, uh, uh, um, um, a lot of uh, focus has been. Uh, people are uh, spending and consuming content on digital. And uh, it seems like, you know, digital was waiting for this particular moment to happen. We always thought, of, thought about, you know, going digital. But I think this is uh, uh, the, the landmark event, I may call in that domain, that we all are forced to look at digital. Um, I would first introduce my panelists today. Um, I have with me Anushri Ghosh, uh, Head of Digital Strategy and Media ITC uh, Limited. I have Gaurav Kapoor, Head Digital Marketing. Head digital marketing. I have uh, Zahid Ahmed, and Head Digital Content and Social uh, Media Marketing, HDFC. And uh, I have Shruti Khanna, uh, Deputy Ma Manager, Digital and Retail Marketing, for India. Uh, welcome all of you. Uh, my Hi, first guys. Hi. Hi, everyone. I hope you guys are coming to this uh, lockdown so much that going to office will be really a struggle after this. Possibly. Yeah. We're just, yeah. this is inertia, lockdown inertia. Lockdown. You don't like to move? Yes. yes. Great. So uh, the format would be that we will have this one hour of session and we will keep 15 minutes for, uh, for live Q&A, uh, which I'll be sharing with you. So I can start with you, Anushri. Uh, my first question is, uh, I'll come to all of you for this answer. Can we now say that the era of digital marketing is... Uh, is uh, have we been very reminded of this fact that digital is here? Well, uh, actually, if you, um, yeah, this could be one of those watershed moments, uh, which mm. kind of give the inflection point uh, to any media. So I think, you know, perhaps the lockdown could, could be termed as one of those. But actually, if you look at uh, since the last one year or so, I mean, ever since, you know, we got into this stage of slowdown. Um, digital has kind of become a, a go-to medium for brands. Uh, there, there have been, you know, it has kind of attained, a, you know, enough scale for it to be comparable, whether it's cost per reach or whether it's uh, from pure play reach and frequency numbers. So, uh, from an effectiveness and efficiency perspective, I think digital has gained scale in the last two years. Um, last year, I think we did an analysis and there were various papers floating around which basically spoke about how, uh, you know, uh, uh, digital did not really witness the flattening or did not really witness uh, a decline when it comes to advertiser spend, uh, while every other medium did. Uh, so slowdown did contribute, you know, um, uh, in uh, monies to actually move towards digital. That's more from an effectiveness and efficiency standpoint. but. Uh, the lockdown essentially has moved consumers to anywhere content is being served. And digital happens to be one of the largest such mediums. And, you know, whether it's from a time spent perspective or a reach perspective or the variety of content perspective or digital being, you know, that go-to medium for seek out behavior because, you know, we all today live in micro moments. We, we have these questions of how to that we want, uh, you know, answered at any given point of time. So digital, you know, happens to be one of those mediums that kind of becomes the starting point of all consumer journeys. So yes, I guess this is one of those watershed moments which could be defined as, you know, the inflection point for digital. Gaurav, I want to ask you, uh, if you're going for a toss, in a way, is this the opportunity for digital uh, marketers to establish their clout? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, as, uh, you know, Anushri has also mentioned, this is the right time and the from past two years, past two years also picked up. But I would say, I would say uh, digital has been a part of uh, all the strategy which, you know, brands are playing. 
but going forward after seeing the situation what is happening right now absolutely this is the right time for the you know companies uh, that previously did not uh, fully develop their uh, digital strategy uh, have the opportunity to switch gears and transform uh, the loss into you know potential gain by you know making changes on their website in english uh, uh, you know uh, payment gateways on their website i'm talking about the some you know traditional companies uh, uh, basically you know uh, upgrading their content marketing strategies you know search engine really come into play, come into play. Come into play. Uh, most of the people uh, connect digital marketing with the you know spends and all those stuff but there are certain things which uh, uh um, you know you can utilize free of cost which is uh, you know one of them is search engine optimization and engagement on your uh, social handle and uh, you know uh, very much aware about that uh, you know recently these guys have activated their uh, ashirwad data you know uh, uh, instagram page where these guys are uh, sharing uh, recipes and that's the best way of you know connecting with their customer engaging with their customer sharing recipes so that's a very good things uh, you know these brands are doing especially mondelez mondelez initially you know recently they have activated their you know delivery channel they opened their delivery channel now connecting with their uh, with customers directly customers directly and which is the future of uh, you know uh, e-commerce i can say so definitely this is the right time uh, for the brands and uh, so that they can explore the you know opportunity in digital medium and uh, and the best part about you know, the digital is uh, obviously they can track the performance they can see uh, what customers are consuming what is the kind of kind of getting, you know so i think yeah definitely this is the uh, uh, right time to utilize digital uh, for future prospect definitely Uh, Shruti, your thoughts on it? Do you agree with what has been said? See, um, digital is definitely the go-to medium. Picking up uh, tremendously from the last year, the second half of the last year specifically, so to say, um, there has been a certain that's coming. Uh, even when you're working from home and you see a lot of people who are at home uh, today, traditional has not gone down, but digital has still increased. So. that shift is that shift is really coming in so you can you, you can see that you know coming months are going to be very critical digital is going to be the prima facie up point you know people are going to be really consuming content as they are now the curve is not going to flatten immediately the curve is going to increase and the curve is going to increase more, uh, in a more equated fashion, fashion you know there's going to be an increment in digital and there's going to be an increment in television so to say also because that's what we're consuming now and we're getting habituated to it so digital is definitely on the uprise there is no uh, there's no two ways about it but it, it's it's, it's, it's when when we go you know when we get over with this and when the lockdown uh, gets removed and when people start moving on to offices what is the timings that the consumption is going to really get back to because the the consumption patterns will change but yes the consumption will remain and it will still see an uprise that's what i feel a little small uh, i will request everyone to phone still they are um, when i come to them so that our audio levels are you know are audible i mean there's a little glitch in that uh, zahid i want to uh, come to you with the same question uh, has the moment uh, for digital marketers arrived they have worked hard for this i think so, uh, are you trying to are you trying to how are you seeing this well uh rohel let, let me let me tell you this way it's like the there's a twist over here it's not so clear the way we are uh, generally seeing it as uh, first when this topic came to me it seemed to me as if like are you asking me uh, do you need oxygen to stay alive oxygen to stay alive that's how it felt okay. but let's slightly deep it slightly deep like uh today uh, there is in talk about out of which like let's say out of which like let's say 50 the main age group is around 50 that's 73% Percent. Thirty-five plus. It's only twenty-seven percent consuming online. So for them, so for still, them, still the preliminary the thing is TV. If you see Ramayana crossing Game of Thrones, so it's still TV. Okay. However, if I divide digital, the word digital, you know, there is digital marketing, and then there is digital assets. 
So if you ask me, so, is digital so, marketing is going to have a change? I'll address that later. Overall, the entire digital infrastructure needs to change now. Let me give you an example. Like, let's say for our business in the BFSI industry, in-person meeting is very important, right? Be it to close the deal or to close the KYC document. That entire downstream process has to change. We have been, we have and been, I think Gaurav rightly mentioned, right the CTOs, the CIOs, the IT team, we all have been struggling to do this. But this is like somebody has whipped us and told, now it's time. It's now or never. So everybody now is the entire backend. The backend is getting stitched up so that the entire so that the end to end process can be created. Too. How Aadhaar can How be used in a better way, way so that we can do the entire end to end business without even going and meeting the person. We are trying to get more of video video calling done so that you know the KYC can be done over there. So these thought through the little nuances to end the call or to end the sale. Which should have done, which should have been doing earlier. I, I think this is the right time that we are trying to do the digital. So, so I think that's how the whole word digital is getting redefined. You know, it's not only in terms of digital marketing, but all assets in a banking's perspective or any other you uh, know organization's perspective, all assets. I, you know, the overall uh, merger and acquisition uh, merger has gone down by eight percent, but still Apple but, went ahead and bought in hundred million dollars this new AR organization, right? That's because the new, the new wave that's coming up, be it in terms of uh, the whole offline part will be AR based. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how people are kind of, you know, uh, upstreaming themselves in, term, in terms of fine tuning their digital assets so that I don't need a physical touch point at all going ahead. And I think that's going to be the new normal. Digital marketing will stay and we'll talk about it later that Digital marketing is staying, but acquisition has completely changed to more of brand-led communication. So that's a different context, you know. Uh, Anushree, um, my next question is that uh, while we are seeing this spike and this, uh, you know, people are liking and consuming digital, but there's another fear. The fear of once the uh, lockdown ends and once the other traditional platforms open up again, Will this be a, will this get reversed? What we have seen, seen in the past, or is this here to stay? Here to stay or will we go back to where we were earlier? I think a couple of points that I would want to make here. Um, and when we call, and I completely agree to the gentleman who was speaking right before me, and, and, and digitization is a really large conversation before we even kind of attempt to speak about digital marketing. So that's a large, uh, you know important conversation to have. Uh, but yeah, there are a couple of things which, which have happened thanks to, you know, or, or probably because of the lockdown, which have perhaps created a larger habit change. So of course, there's going to be a correction. Like for example, news as a genre is, is, is really surging today. And over a period of time, news as a genre is going to correct itself, right? Similarly, digital as a genre, the time spent is disproportionately high. So is the time spent on television. If you look at the bark reports, it's actually all mediums, all content platforms are witnessing a huge surge when it, when it comes to reach as well as the time spent. However, on digital, there are two things that have happened and I'm just going to kind of pick up one of the habits which have, which have really shifted is, you know, the, the content platforms or the OTTs uh, have suddenly seen this surge of uh, consumers who have, now witness this possibility of video on demand. So earlier, consumers who are used to viewing content from an appointment viewing perspective, they have now been exposed to a newer way of content consumption, which is video on demand. So it could be from a free, premium, or paid subscription perspective. Now that's a new exposure. That is likely to kind of perhaps stay on because video on demand you know, essentially has its own virtues and hence as there's a lot more control that the consumer has on the way you consume content. That's one piece. And I was also reading somewhere, it's, it's around e-commerce, right? So right before lockdown, I think the, the first week, which is the week of 25th of March, uh, and right before that, I think in two weeks, uh, e-commerce, uh, you know, uh, apps uh, put together in just in two weeks, saw around 8 million downloads put together, all apps put together, which essentially means whether, whether or not they were delivering, which essentially means 
you suddenly became comfortable to this idea of ordering online over an app it could be an app of dmart it could be a kirana store app it could be swiggy grocery it could be zomato grocery any of these what essentially happened was, was that you opened up to your mind to accepting groceries vegetables being delivered to your home so these are two large habits which essentially shifted uh, which perhaps is here to stay other time spent media consumption i think it's going to kind of correct itself and it's going to kind of reach its status quo levels but there are certain larger habits which have kind of changed and i think i'm one of the habits i will actually talk about in uh, when we speak about content so to speak because there is this emergence of creators which has started to happen which essentially means i'm not my competition to branded content is not another branded content it's actually competition from creator content which you know i think we should delve a little deeper when we're speaking about um, you know uh, content but there are these quasi brand ambassadors all over and we are really really you know emotionally connected to these people whether it's in the makeup space whether it's in the uh it's in the you know recipe space whether it's in the music space or you know edu- ed tech has become really large telemedicine has become really large so you are suddenly open to these possibilities of remote consumption of guidance or some kind of solution so i think there are some larger behavioral changes that have happened which are perhaps here to stay i think you are on mute uh can you hear me yes so i said uh, yeah. i agree with you uh, it takes 21 days to form my habit and we are well into one and a half months so yes the habit is there gorav i want to come to you yeah uh, yeah uh, do you think uh, on the certain habit of digital going digital and uh, marketers will benefit it and it won't go back to where uh, it used to be it will be slightly higher than that yeah yeah absolutely i think uh, uh, everyone has mentioned that uh, people are getting used to the new normal now uh, they are consuming more content they are you know uh, they are very much comfortable in using you know uh, uh, delivery apps and all those stuff if i'll give you one more example so i was reading somewhere that uh, recently on google uh, you know near me related queries had decreased and the delivery related queries has increased during this time so like more and more people are you know kind of uh, uh, searching about these thing and they are getting comfortable with you know online delivery because this will be a new normal going forward considering basic hygiene safety and all those stuff uh, so i think uh, the curve will remain there in terms of consumption obviously increase and uh, also that zahid uh, has mentioned that uh, instead of digital marketing digital will be there definitely i can tell you from my personal experience uh, so recently we uh, like 6 7 months back we launched you know chatbot on our website uh, for you know basic uh, uh, basic stuff like you know uh, checking itinerary downloading itinerary flight status check and all those stuff so during this time during the lockdown the queries on you know we have seen a 5x increase in queries on our chatbot which is phenomenal and now we are you know kind of thinking of uh, expanding that chatbot into you know different uh, parameters as well so definitely digital will grow in terms of consumption digital marketing is a outcome of that particular consumption that how much you know money you are spending that depends on what is the kind of uh, tg you want to target what is the kind of reach you want to you know uh, uh, you want to see on your particular plan so i think uh, digital will remain there and consumption pattern will definitely uh, push this digital market think for the and the people are enabling you know voice search on their uh, website because that's a new millennial thing most of the new millennials are comfortable with voice messages yeah so i think all these pattern you know will definitely give a boost to entire digital and hence uh, your digital marketing will definitely grow so yeah should be your thoughts on this so digital marketing or digital i mean it's 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 a holistic view right digital is huge and you can segregate it by different content types you can segregate it by different mediums of how and where you're communicating but eventually it's the consumer who's consuming the content and that consumer base is really increasing and uh, stay at home has become the new normal which is very true and i agree with anushree and gorav and jai when they say that uh, the downloads have really increased the app downloads have increased 
and it's very true you know whether it's the local kirana shop everyone is coming up with a digital solution you have governments who are bringing out apps which are you know in very quick turnaround times which used to take much longer earlier just for the convenience of the consumer and the consumer is using it we are consuming that content and that that is acceptance of the medium per you know so to say so the acceptance of the medium is really increasing and which is exactly the reason why this is going to really go up now virtual 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 uh, drives virtual home showings is really going to increase you you if you want to buy a house the new normal could probably be where you're seeing a virtual house you have someone who is doing a virtual video of the house and taking you doing a full 360 turn around answering questions for you online that could be possibly the new normal you're taking a virtual test drive of a car that could be the possible new normal until now you wanted to physically touch and feel a car you would still want to do it but the first step to it would probably be doing a virtual look and feel if you really if you really want to be there right instead of risking going out and really being there and getting a worse to a factor of yes or no you might want to do it online because that becomes the new normal and i mean there i i was reading somewhere and there's a friend of mine who put up a post it's very true said that never say never there was a time when we said digital is never going to take up digital is never going to you know pick up digital is never going to kill traditional media and it's very true to say that never say never because digital is really picking up now and digital is the new now so it's about the content that you're serving everyone is serving content today if i open a channel on youtube or on facebook and i start creating content i will have viewers if the content is relevant to people staying at home and that's relevant to everyone it's not only a brand it's every consumer is becoming content driven on his own so yes it's um, it's it's here to stay uh sai let me uh, reframe this for you uh so once the uh other once the lockdown opens up and other platforms are also there to be in is there a fear also fear also among marketers that digital marketers especially that you know we might lose uh, a certain amount of spike that we have seen or are, are you also prepared for that okay cool so uh so it's never a either or or story it's always and right um i think you know though i am very sensitive to what's happening and why the lockdown is happening but if i may take a take a leeway and if i just make quote an analogy like this is uh, for digital marketing or for digital this is like god's way of enforcing a demonetization into the digital world right so if you are not this is the time do it or you lose your business and that's why i think everybody the it's the marketing guys everybody is running from pillar to post to get themselves digitally enabled right and so now let's say now, now ruhel you mentioned 21 days to take form a habit i might just ask you 100 years of traditional habit versus your audio is muted sorry yeah. it's a very great point yes sorry yeah so it's 100 years of traditional habit versus only 10 years of digital habit which takes a more time to kind of you know get rid of so it's a lot of ifs and buts you know but what the way i see the best part of the uh, the the best part of lockdown if i have to take it in a very positive way okay is is that see you know when i i'm sure all of us have come from the sales side and then we have evolved ourselves to marketing the first thing that we used to hit in sales is we have to go out in the sun and then reach out to the customers and then the customer might say i am not even present meet me tomorrow okay let's take a how much of time the guy can efficiently do sitting at his own house so the virtual meetings we generally take eight meetings two or eight times eight touch points to set up a meeting that's research says right brain says that the number of touch points might increase it might be that 12 touch points to set up a meeting but it becomes a more progressive thought process the sales guys are sitting at their home the work life balance increases right uh you know real estate might the, the real estate prices might come down organizations infrastructure will be nicely placed there's a lot of positive uh, you know impact that will be there in the ecosystem at large than just talking about you know that digital will be of a great boon and not others are 
what i feel is you know post lockdown things might just still come back to normal slowly you know covid is a dormant state it's not that it's gone out of our bodies completely it's not okay so covid is at a dormant state it might just relapse might not relapse it's very futuristic futuristic to comment right now but what will be interesting to see is with digitally equipped every organization how well and see indians were never indians especially indian organizations never had the concept of work from home and that's why we are struggling where 24 hours have virtually become work from home now slowly we are finding ethics we are finding the etiquette of working from home hr is slowly rolling down in, in fact they also now cracking what are the right etiquette of working from home now see when these things are progressing what's happening is we are rightly using the machineries that have been given to them or it was lying with us we were not using them to use our time most efficiently to use our you know uh, workspace most efficiently and i think that will be a very good mix to see how digital will be a digital juxtaposed against traditional uh, infrastructure gives me the best of combination and hence i any organization can leverage these two tools that been the best way and as i said mark digital marketing part of it is a very small nuance you know that's always there to see data but this infrastructure setup will be very interesting to see how it shapes up so i want to make a small announcement that we are live on fb twitter uh, insta exchange for media website and we're getting a lot of questions so uh, you can tweet us uh, with hashtag eforum webinar and send us the questions a lot of questions already uh, started coming in uh, shruti i want to now uh, come to you with the, my next question is uh, going forth you know we always uh, heard in the last uh, few years about digital getting a lot of attention from brands in terms of spends you know uh, the budgets uh, going forth as we move from here do you think this is going to be uh, the digital will figure more prominently in the marketing mix than uh, what we used to see in terms of budget allocations yeah so um i think digital is going to hold a higher share in the pie of the marketing mix it's always been there um for us for example for ford digital has been uh, a, a high contributor in the share of the marketing pie for us overall but i think all brands are going to slowly move towards it because it's not like i said earlier it's not one phase of digital or one part of digital it's the entire media con consumption right and that is going to increase that is increasing it it's on the spike right so it may the curve may slow down but it will not stop and it will steadily keep improving so the mix has to include digital it's not going to survive without that definitely traditional media will remain because jayat said very rightly it's it's a choice between whether you form a habit in 21 days or you lose the 100 years old habit which is easier you will most likely lose a 21 day habit that you formed sooner than the older habits that you've had since your childhood right but the ones that you have formed now will remain not that they'll go out so your mix has to include it you will not brands will not be able to survive and that's again from experience and from the way we've been dealing with with digital uh, you know in our uh, industry and in our company at ford digital is a digital holds a major share and we we believe that digital is the way forward to come because brands need to be online consumers are consuming content everywhere you're in a metro you're online you're in a car you're online you have the driver driving for you or you're listening to some content online right you have you have music uh, apps which also give you content now and if you're not there where the consumer is it's very difficult to catch hold of the consumer just on a print uh in the morning or just towards radio let's say two times in a day which are the peak hours when you're traveling or just on television when you're watching it probably prime time news in the evening or in the morning so digital is the way forward and brands have to have to add that in the share of mix otherwise it's going to be difficult for survival eventually it's not going to be competition it's going to be content that lives and if the brands that deliver the content with the right mix are going to survive Gaurav, I want to understand your thoughts on this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, uh, I think digital. If we talk about the digital ad spends, it's been increasing Y on Y. Adex is increasing digital Y on Y. So that's something which is that will continue in future as well. But the the only change which we are seeing at this point in time, as I earlier mentioned, that 
habit is getting changed on you know on daily basis so we have seen a you know increase in consumption close to 30% during this time people are consuming more content digitally and all those stuff right newer and newer people are coming to you know uh, e-commerce website or the e-commerce apps they are you know making purchases they are searching for you know uh, where can i get the delivery at my home or something like that so these are the queries are increasing so hence uh, if you want to you know capture these intent you if you want to reach out to these people so obviously you have to spend something you know extra on digital because consumption pattern is already there so once you start spending on digital at least the best part about digital is you can see your what is the, what what is the kind of roi you are getting from that particular campaign or the you know particular channel and uh, you can you know easily figure it out what is the kind of buying pattern of user is showing what is the high you know what is the lifetime value of a user and you can personalize your messaging that's the best part if i talk about the main line so you can't personalize your message with a respective user so i think uh, uh, definitely digital ad spends will uh, continue to increase but uh, in terms of priority because uh, in a typical media plan uh, digital is one of the line item of the media plan which uh, holds like 10 to 15% of overall spends but def- uh, now onwards i can see that digital will be a central medium and the rest of the things will revolve around it supporting items and uh, it will take a first priority media plan so that's the best part about it a lot of questions coming. So after, after this round, we will go to the Q&A round. Anushri, for you, you know, what a lot of people are saying is that digital is fine, convenient, it targets you and everything else. But the issue is that there's no impact, you know, no a physical, physical experiential impact. But you said that AR and VR can, you know, compensate for it. But tell me, how do you explain that you know the budgets would go here you know when some of them are saying that the impact is missing sometimes the long lasting impact you would just forget about it so um i think budgets is 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 an outcome you know in most cases uh, and I'm, I'm talking from a cpg perspective in most cases media plans actually try to reach out to where the consumer is so um you know if i'm the if, if I, I identify a target audience, if the consumer is on digital, ideally, you know, the media plan should be able to reach me on digital and similarly on other mediums. So the budget is pretty much uh, an outcome of, you know, a more consumer centric planning approach. But what needs to kind of then come into the picture, and I think this lack of digital impact piece actually comes from the lack of uh, you know, digital measurement, so to speak. I think digital measurement, which is the single source measurement where, you know, where you are able to kind of understand the attribution or the role of each of these mediums in brand building. I think that's that's the piece which is kind of missing. So I think, you know, before we actually talk about critical mass of investment on digital, it's essentially kind of having a more robust uh, measurement of, of impact, a more robust you know, single source planning mechanism, which, which can be ad- adapted across industries. Because I think television became television simply because the organization uh, you know, or, or a more condensed view of multiple reach mediums coming together. So I think digital is still siloed. Digital still has, you know, their own whims and fancies. Each, each of the platforms are, you know, kings in their audience hubs in their own rights. Everyone wants to become a veteran. So all of those concerns actually make a digital a medium which you know a lot of mass marketers question in terms of impact so i guess it's it's the back end or it's the it's the digital infrastructure from a strategy planning and measurement that needs to kind of come to the fore if we really are looking at digital investment at scale Zahid, i mean your category, your category already as one of the most mature players in the the, the way they use digital uh, bfsi but tell me, I mean, from here, uh, do we see further uh, you know, strengthening of those digital budgets uh, in your category as well? Yeah, so let me take this in two ways. First of all, you know, when, when let me draw a parallel this entire lockdown scenario to, to 2000 recession. Okay. We are going through, now a lot of organizations are doing what? They are telling, wow, wow. It's just like, no business, cut down your media cost. Forget about digital also. It's like overall media cost. Okay. Now, this is the right time to actually take a step back, think through, because 65% of consumers have told that this is the time if the brands can relate to me, 
this is the time if you don't go media dark and you know in a very positive way talk to me then when post lockdown these brands will see much more incremental effect from the same consumers okay so first of all i think the most important thing is not to go media dark but to constantly obviously how much of the budget is come is is just like the cfo's call and the cmo's call how much the cmo can convince the cfo okay but it's 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 organization should ensure that they are present in a very nice way in the entire digital spectrum and maybe atl's tv because i think this is the two mediums that's very significant only at this point of time now coming to digital see uh, what's happening is uh, what will change like let's say we used to have those traditional uh, events and like let's say auto car show shruti will relate to it right we used to have this big uh, events and all this to happen people used to come in we used to have leads right now let's say after spending x amount we used to get like x leads hence you can obviously draw a parallel to the cost per lead now that now just think that entire thing will shift to digital okay instead of having instead of having a well spread let's say uh, you know a uh, auto show you might be having a completely auto a virtual reality led auto show okay might be saving a, the whole making cost of a virtual reality is one time and hence having it multiple times will save a lot of cost and then you have the leads now uh, following up on the leads also becomes very easy you know you block the calendar be persistent be polite but you can continuously follow on it so that's how the digital spread will change now coming to the part of digital mix you know it's not important that how much budgets we'll gonna give i think there was always a question that was asked to digital that will digital means measurement so how will you give me the exact measurement and what digital is doing i think this is the time the entire digital team should step up put their measurement metrics even if it's like a 5% or 10% of their cost they should get all the tools embedded so that they can prove to the senior management that yes digital is actually the way to go ahead both in terms of brand visibility as in creating awareness and in terms of downstream end to end you know uh, sales because if you can prove at this point of time i think then this is the real go ahead and you, you, you have to just you know take the take it with open arms and if you can really prove to your senior management that digital can do both not only uh, sales or not only visibility it, it can do both and if you can really help out with a good media mix and attribution model i think then the gates are open to you even after post lockdown nobody can take that from you right. so i have a lot of questions coming in i think we will start with the q and a round and i want to everyone to kind of uh, have their questions answered I'll start with you, Anushree. The first question is from uh, Rishi Jain. He's asking, "What happens like real estate, which is high involvement, experience based category?" Sorry, I missed some part of the sentence. So, Rishi Jain is asking, "What happens to sectors like real estate, which is a high involvement?" experience based category how would digital serve them so there are i think two uh, two ways and i think that's uh, i think the largest use case of digital is personalization uh, and 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 today we are seeing personalized experiences being served uh, to consumers based on the data that gets you know that gets generated or garnered by multiple players so i think personalized offerings uh, to uh, Uh, you know, to real estate players, from real estate players to when you actually reach out to consumers, um, such that whether it's from an experience perspective, the entire funnel, um, I think the uh, the entire experience can be brought alive right from awareness of a particular property to uh, to you know uh, making someone aware of the area that they are in to um, you know possibly the budgets that they would potentially be. kind of looking at so i think there is a lot more information that uh, that we have currently to kind of and i think the real estate anyway if you have been heavy on digital in the past you would be sitting on a mine of data like that so i think personalization at scale becomes a very large use case for any of these uh, larger uh, you know a uh, higher involvement categories so whether it's uh, automobile whether it's real estate um or even bfsa i think personalization at scale would be a large use case for digital especially That's in this time So, as I said, this is related to real estate, and SDFC does a lot in that, you know, space. I mean, tell me a little bit about this, your perspective on, you know, how can digital help the real estate? Yeah, the real estate. So, see, I think um, players like Anarok, they had almost taken that step to digitize, digitalize the entire 
you know end to end process in uh, real estate but i think what rishi might be asking is how do i have a look and feel of a let's say if i used to go for an open plot they used to have that you know sample house created out over there to show me right uh, that you know take a tour of this house and though in a later case uh, 25% might not be matching in a real house versus what the sample plot was shown that's a different story but i think that's what rishi is asking that you know how will i ensure that what i am seeing is what uh, or actually in real estate i need to see the house before i buy how do i get into that so rishi you know to your answer people are again that's why we were telling that you know we have to be prepared as a with digital as an asset digital marketing is a sub part to it and believe me though again i was telling this point that merger and acquisitions are dropping by 8.3% but during this scenario also apple acquired an ar tech tool called next vr with 100 million dollars just to ensure that you know the entire vr space is geared up for this things like auto things like uh, you no know, uh, even like household things like furniture paper price very well prepared you have seen lens cart how they have uh, how they have ensured to use vr where you can actually see your face using the spectacles uh, which you are wearing and then you can choose that yes i need to buy this or not so that's how we have to gear up in terms of our digital space so that you know i can really have a very good feel in fact i am forgetting the site's name where you can place yourself inside the room and you can have a complete feel of the room as to how it's shaping up and that's how real estate is set, is set to get up uh, shruti there's a question uh, for you uh, this is from siddharth sharma he's asking uh, what happens to auto industry where dealer involvement is fairly high you know the real physical stores are uh, really relevant so what happens in that topic right siddharth so this is where digital comes in place again and uh, this is where uh, virtual reality really comes in place though dealers are very important and like i mentioned earlier that the touch and feel of a product is very important but so is personalization and if this continues as is and uh, the thoughts on this are that we should become more visual and more personal so you have to show yourself and you have to be personal so the thought that ford is going ahead with and um, i'll talk about it from the point of view that i'm working on currently is that a consultant when you want to go to buy a car you want to see the name of the person you want to know the name of the person you want to see the person individually so that you know who you're talking to right who's selling you the car is it the right person or not and this is just a small example so some things like you do virtual test drives things like you have a consultant or a sales person actually doing a virtual demo of the car while giving you a personal introduction and addressing you as let's say you know siddharth hi siddharth i am shruti and i'd like to show you a car now for a test drive so that's a personalization effect that comes into place which is virtual as well as audio so while you are not really there but you are you are you know you are giving a face to the name you are giving a face to the brand and that's more important in this space to not lie low to not die down in in the darkness of the media you have to look for non traditional mediums to really come up and with the opportunity in the video content space that we have today this is this is a big way that we can change the way we really come out and talk about selling or buying products so yes so virtually selling cars is is the new try to be and if i may just add to shruti you know uh, so are we telling that you know uh, that dealers and going and personally visiting dealers will be completely out of context certainly not but you know what if you go to the dealers and you say okay red car is good but my color is blue do you have the blue sample to be shown to me he will say sir wo to factory workshop mein hai aapko abhi dikha nahi sakte but this is exactly where the vr will come in place you can choose your color you can choose your seating arrangement and you can actually absolutely. have a complete rundown and that will be a great help absolutely yeah absolutely it's like a 360 it's like you're virtually there you're seeing it all and then when you see a face to someone who's actually showing that to you online it just adds to the wow factor so it's a combination it's a combination of people it's a combination of product it's a combination of place and it's a combination of acceptance of the consumer to that particular piece so yes right. that is the new and, and in fact you know generally people also do offline to negotiate on the price beyond the product if you remember facebook uh, flipkart had created a bot called haggle which was completely on negotiating further the price that was already mentioned on the ecom portal okay 
So if you can create that kind of a personalized bot, which bases your internal data as in, I can only negotiate and give you a better price after I understand you, right? So if you can create that kind of a bot, which can understand, it's obviously it has to be AI and AI led. I think it's, it's pretty much doable. It's pretty much doable. Uh, Gaurav, I want to come to you. The next question, the sender has not, uh, say it's an anonymous question, but uh, uh, with attention span of less than five seconds on digital and only few eyeballs on outdoor and print and TV, what should be the next step of marketeers in, in digital platforms? Yeah, I think uh, as you correctly mentioned that uh, time span is only five seconds. So uh, that's where, when, you know, content uh, strategy will come into play, uh, keeping uh, customer empathy in mind, because uh, that's very critical. Your, uh, you know, messaging has to be very precise. And, uh, you know, during this time, if I'll give you one example, during this time, most and more, more and more people are, you know, uh, they want to know what exactly airlines are doing. From, from my perspective, I can give you my example from a hygiene perspective, from a safety perspective, what steps we are, you know, uh, taking to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, passenger will have a hassle-free journey, passenger will have a safe and, you know, hygiene, we are maintaining all those hygiene parameters and all those stuff. So that's very critical, keeping customer empathy in mind. And if you stitch your entire content strategy around, so that will be a, you know, communication uh, uh, strategy you should have. So that you can directly connect with your customer and subtly you can send a message and what exactly the offering you guys have. So that's very critical at this point in time. Uh, Anushree, for you, uh, there's a question from Mohit uh, Chablani. He's saying, how do we see FMCG brands plan their media spends during the lockdown? Are they planning to use digital media and will it be standard or interactions and engagement led? So I think it's a very, it's a very pertinent question and, and uh, we keep kind of struggling to kind of strike that right balance. So while one wants to be really, really relevant, while one wants to be really, really topical, uh, I think uh, from a business perspective, uh, there are certain thresholds which, which can be very well met today. So with, from a reach and frequency mm -hmm. perspective. So I think capitalizing on those parameters should be your first uh, priority. I mean, if I were to kind of, uh, if I were to prioritize, I mean, I'm not saying that each is removed from one other, but, uh, another, but, you know, if, if you have uh, the opportunity to capitalize on this elevated reach and the time spent, I think the first thing to do is to maintain thresholds when it comes to kind of your reach numbers. And then I think uh, the other thing that you need to do is to, to develop mental availability, which essentially means that you know, being contextual, being relevant. So you will see a whole lot of engagement based conversations uh, or working with creators. You know, uh, today, I think someone spoke about uh, content, which is the content strategy, which is right. I think the, the largest competition to branded content is essentially content from creators or influencers uh, as we see. So if we, if we pretty much know how to kind of use that content or use them to your advantage, or use them in a sustainable manner to build larger or long lasting associations. I think that is a larger strategy to look at. So I think if I were to prioritize capital by all means, CPG brands capitalize on the elevated reach from a reach and frequency perspective. If you have more money left, then kind of explore the space of being topical, engagement led, or if you have a really large uh, you know, initiative to talk about. Just do not kind of jump the jump on the bandwagon of becoming really, really topical because you just want to kind of ride the wave. Uh, I think if you don't have really interest, something interesting to talk about, I think the uh, the simplest and the most hygiene thing to do is to kind of communicate your brand message. I want to come to you, uh, Gaurav, and to Zahid. Then the same question to both of you. Uh, what is your take on OTT content being aired on GCs as there are repeats, as they are repeats, uh, movie, movies being aired since shoots are on hold. What would be the impact of this repetitive content? This is to Gaurav and uh, Zahid. This is from Pushpa Anant Raman. Gaurav, you can start. Yeah, okay. So I think OTT, uh, as we have already mentioned that con consumption is already increasing on, you know, each and every OTT platform, be it your Netflix or any, you name it and uh, consumption is already there. So more and more people will continue to, you know, uh, 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 
con consume all these contents and all, and all these things if you if i'll give you one example i think if i am not correct so english medium movie was released on uh, one of the ott platforms uh, in recent days so that's a that's a big move uh, in terms of you know having uh, like uh, all the you know cinema halls and everything is currently shut down so i think uh, we'll see some kind of uh, uh, increment numbers on ott platform and it will continue to do so after this uh, lockdown as well what do you say zahir what your thoughts on this so i think i think i think uh, yeah tv is going repetitive ott cannot be repetitive because it's a ocean of content out over there right so i think what's best done is it's a connected tv experience that people are loving to do at this point like you know it's beat by a fire stick or google chrome chromecast what you're doing is you're watching ott on tv okay and then it's the ocean is wide open for you okay choose whatever you want to see and we are seeing data it's uh, 40 to 50% content that's getting consumed is only hindi only 16% is english okay so that's the kind of uh, content that's being consumed today in india uh yeah i think i think uh, work from home was initially perceived as maybe a short term holiday okay so people love the content okay but slowly realization is setting in no it's this is the new normal and they're trying to do so maybe some part of it some time spent will be uh, will be reduced but i think yeah ott is being explored like never before and the best part is at the cost of ott you are getting tv advertisement i think that's the best part uh, shruti for you uh, there's a question from tanvir daswani uh, he's asking that the supply chain of uh, products is in uh, like you know it has been disrupted how do we communicate and promote our brands in a time when we have nothing to sell actually so i think we need to uh, tanvir we need to look at this period as not a selling period but as a being there period uh, specifically now uh, it's not it's not the time to sell honestly if i may put it it is the time to emotionally connect and to show your presence to just be there to talk and to convey your communication in a more subtle manner Uh, hard selling is not the key at as of this point but if you're present now you will be more uh, you will be better remembered and you will be top of the mind when the shift moves from just consuming content to actually buying the content so uh, that's the key and we have to remember that uh, we are not ready to spend high value right now the spend currently are mostly on groceries or home related items which are more of an emergency seeking right now right so if i am present as a brand to just be top of the mind to the consumer to be able to consume my content to ensure that i remain there and i don't right i mean the person recognizes me at a brand when they actually want to buy the product when that shift comes in place that is most important right now so be there be communicable be uh, pass your message be subtle and don't oversell your product is the key you can and you can go about actually talking about messaging on what your brand does uh, it could be just related with what your brand stands for and how you stand with the consumer through this period just being an emotional support is is more viable at this point of time to be around rather than talking about selling your products hardcore um so i have another 7 minutes so we'll quickly have a couple of questions this one to you anushri uh, what will change in the way brands use digital post covid i mean how would the digital strategy be different from what it used to be i think uh, uh, it's going to be become uh, it's going to become more consolidated in terms of uh, media strategy so to speak so there is no digital strategy and there is no traditional media strategy it's um, you know consumers actually straddling across multiple mediums i know that the time spent on digital is a little higher than time spent on mediums like television in fact television has probably delivered the highest reach possible with uh, some of the nostal nostalgia based communication so uh, you know what's going to happen it's the importance of looking at um, single source planning single source measurement more consolidated me media approaches more consolidated you know uh, storytelling so one you know assigning roles to multiple mediums um you know if, if certain mediums like for example online video and television are upper funnel mediums 
how do we kind of stitch the upper funnel mediums with lower funnel mediums, which is your buy now campaigns and commerce led campaigns, etc. I think consolidation is going to be, um, I think it's going to become like an imperative. There is no, there is no shying away from it. There is no siloed uh, planning or siloed strategy that can be adopted anymore. I think it's just going to be the most important thing to do for marketers is to kind of think, um, you know, uh, integrated. I mean, I know it's a very passe term to use, but it's it's to kind of think of um, uh, the entire consumer journey and that the consumer is likely to kind of traverse and how to be relevant and be salient across the different points of that consumer journey. I think that's going to become, you know, I think it's been important always, but the importance is really, really uh, going to be more pronounced now. Right. Um, uh, Shruti, for you, uh, there's a question from Veera. Uh, what would be the impact or role of digital marketing on uh, uh, industry? For example, your voice is breaking. Yeah. Your, your voice is broken. I couldn't hear the question. Could you repeat that for me, Can please? Me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's a question, uh, what would be the impact of digital on uh, uh, sectors like extremes, where auto is kind, kind of an you know, auto relies heavily? So how would you create experience using digital? So if I understand, again, your voice was breaking, but if I understood your question correctly, it's about how would you rely on digital in spaces like auto? Is that correct? Creating experiential experience. Creating experiential marketing in spaces like sectors like auto. Yeah, so like I mentioned uh, earlier also, experiential marketing is about how you want to provide the experience, right? So the consumer is there to grasp the content that you want to give out. It's a question of whether you are, um, you have the capacity to deliver that experience. So today with digital, and I'll give you a small example of how Ford is doing it. We have our uh, dealerships and people are working from home and they are actually delivering the experience of the product and test drives by recording their own videos and sending them to customers to tell them that we are there for you. We know it's a tough time, but because you showed interest in a product, we'd like to share product information with you and they're doing product demos from home. So that's creating a different personalized experience. So when the people actually, when the lockdown opens and people are really going down to the stores to buy the product, you know who you were speaking to, who was making that effort to really give you that experience or give you a positive feel when you were away. So experiential marketing is, is a way of looking at it. It can be in lieu of product, it can be in lieu of a feeling, it can be in lieu of a video, it can be in lieu of content. And Ford is currently using the space in content. So I think content is the biggest key here, like we've been talking. And we can deliver the content experience however we want to. We've got videos and the consumption of videos has increased drastically. So that's a positive point for us to look at where we can really deliver experiential marketing through personalized experiences. That's, that's, the, that's what's going to really uh, be the highlight and positive point here. Uh, Zahid, I want to come to you. Uh, there's a question from Jay Gopal. Uh, how are clients going to measure ROI from digital campaigns? Uh, what gets measured? Uh, yeah, I think I was mentioning this point. This is the time that God has given you to all digital marketeers. Please take it with both hands. So see, all this while, a lot of these guys, which is online and offline dependent, the online used to be considered to generate leads. There was no measurement metrics of end-to-end -end that this, these are the leads who have finally got considered. A lot of organizations don't even have the digital integrated with the CRM end-to-end -end to understand that, okay, finally, which lead got closed by which channel, but this is an entire attribution. So this is the time we have to get the attribution modeling right. This is the time we have to get all the, like, do you have an entire end-to-end -end analytics in place? We might have, we, let's say for banking guys, there might be analytics pre-net banking. But if this guy is coming inside net banking, what is he doing? What is he not doing in terms of, is he dropping off? If he's dropping off, do you have a heat map analysis to understand why is he dropping off? These are the times we should invest in the right tools to ensure that we understand the drop-off journey 
the way a sales guy see see digital is the biggest branch possible the way for a let's say for a car dealer or for a bank if you go to a bank branch a sales guy will know the everything about the customer because they have been observing it and for them sales is passion and the customer is god to them okay in the same way in digital we have to know everything about the customer why is he dropping off what convenience can be given to them uh, the way a lot of e-commerce and uh, you know the travel guys have done the journey i think yeah that's what we have to uh, this is the right time that we have to put these tools in place to do the entire measurement but uh, having said the the question was that measurement is important and this is the time i am just going through the question once uh, yes uh, i mean what gets measured and uh, how do we measure roi from digital so see so first of all you have to have the right tools in place second we were telling and shruti was also men- mentioning this is not the right time for tactical campaigns this is the time where you have to take a step back and really understand why what is your purpose of the brand why are you existing okay and hence talk to customer in a very emotional way which is helpful hopeful and inspirational right. then when you go tactical and now when you are talking about this part this is where top of the funnel content takes place like let's say in a banking scenario people are looking at when moratorium came in people were people were clueless what moratorium is people did not know that the impact of moratorium is good or bad for them people did not know that the principal amount can be paid but interest will actually get accrued okay so that was the time either we could have just told do it but we took a steps ensuring to educate the customer right and these things can always be measured by online online bls you know the way we have brand track offline can we establish an online bls survey so if you see the entire uh, movement of your campaigns have moved social so can we have a bls uh you know uh, activated for every post that you do to ensure that the kind of communication top of the funnel communication that you're doing is showing a lift in your brand or not and in digital you can do a bls basis you know state basis geography you can do that so so every funnel of your campaign that you're doing at this point of time should be measured different measurement matrix for different part of the campaign but they have to do because this is the right time that you have to show the impact either the brand is increasing or the top of the mind recall is increasing or the end to end business is increasing very important yes so this is my last question to all of you same question but only 30 seconds for for this i would request to keep it for 30 seconds i'll start with you gorup uh, you know all said and done we have digital and everything and people are ready to accept the messaging but we cannot sell to them directly you know so one you have an opportunity but you cannot use it at the same time because nobody is in the mood to you know kind of buy things so how do we kind of negotiate with this uh, this different difficult situation what is your advice you know how to deal with this situation so i think uh, uh, so first obviously uh, if you are not you know there are certain brands which are you know uh, which were not able to utilize the opportunity of going digital and all so i think this is the right time going to a you know drawing board back again and they can you know sketch their digital journey that how they can further optimize and all those things and as zahid has clearly mentioned this is the right time to optimize uh, you know digital in terms of roi because that's the best part about the digital that you can you know uh, calculate the each and every single roi of your spends beat any of the channels but you just have to you know right set of uh, tools with you where you can you know optimize where you can you know see the entire user journey across your website and all from which page that person is getting dropped off and how you can personalize the messaging so that that person can connect with the things so i think um, uh, Uh, this is something which is very critical search engine optimization is something which is most of the companies they don't even you know bother to invest uh, time on that but that's very critical because you can you know kind of optimize your campaigns you can get maximum roi from the you know uh, search engine optimization channels when person is coming to your website so i think all these things it's very critical in terms of implementing all those things right uh, anushree quickly your thoughts on this so i think uh, cpg brands uh, have have managed to kind of really really uh, you know uh, get past this curveball that uh, you know the world has presented so you know if you uh, if you look at the way this, this entire challenge of overcoming the supply chain uh, you know issues 
uh, I think a lot of CPG brands have piggybacked on existing models. So I think you would have seen whether it's a Unilever or an ITC partnering with the most unsuspected partners like a Domino's delivery engine to directly kind of reach out to consumers. Similarly, you know, there are many initiatives, for example, ITC has ITC on wheels, which kind of directly kind of takes products from factories to consumers uh, and, and basically kind of reaching out to or uh, creating these direct to consumer kind of touch points. So I think this has been the time that, you know, uh, it's kind of given the opportunity to really rethink your entire consumer journey and how do you kind of truncate it so that you are able to kind of come up with these very startup like ideas. So I think all large organizations have suddenly become so agile and, and they've moved um, all sorts of their entire red tape that exists in the middle to kind of completely truncate this journey from production to, you know, sales. So I think this is one of those periods that, you know, all brands have kind of large CPG brands have uh, adopted uh, the startup way of operating when it comes to sales. Perfect. Shruti, quick words from you. So, I think I'll stick to the facts that it's very important that you keep your house clean. So when you get into your house, you have to see what are the basic, make a checklist and what you need to do in order to first stay top of the mind and then add on to the measurement metrics that you need to do so that you stay there, right? So it's very important. Do not forget to do your SEO. It's very important. It will help you in the longer run. It will not help you in selling right now, but it will help you because when you, it, it, takes, it takes two months to bring into effect. So by the time things start stabilizing, things start coming into pace, it will help you when the consumers are really seeing you to buy the products. Make sure your house is clean. Make sure you have your measurement metrics in place. Uh, there are very simple tools available. Google, there's uh, Adobe. There's a lot of stuff available, which is easy to access. And you can learn online. You can pick up those stuff. And a lot of the big businesses are really going for the simpler tools to be able to give the cleaner metrics. So clearer and cleaner metrics is very important now. And that's what we should stick to. So I'll, I'll keep it short that way. Zahir, final words, 30 seconds. Uh, so I think customers are our love. And when the love is in a sad state, we have to act like friends. You know, we cannot be opportunistic to sell products at this point of time. We have to behave like friends. That means we have, we have to show empathy. We have to show that we are not opportunistic and I'm there to stay with you no matter how much longer time it takes for you to recover. Just be there to be with him or her. Okay, that's, I think that's my brand with obviously whatever your brand purpose is. I think that should be the goal of any brand. Having said that, very important, you get ready with the digitization of your process, digitization of your tools. And two important aspects in terms of channels, video will increase, programmatic will increase because programmatic can easily get connected with OTT also. Finally, top of the funnel content. Very important at this point of time. Tactical is the least thing that we should focus on. Thank you, all of you. We still have another 40 questions unanswered, but uh, we cannot. I'm sorry, we don't have time for it. But we'll be putting this video on YouTube. Uh, they can always come and listen to it and post their questions on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. And we'll try to reach out to you with those questions. Thank you once again uh, for being part of this uh, uh, virtual second part. And at a physical, post COVID era. Thanks again for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.